Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. In last week's video, my guest, Frank Young, showed us an amazing uh, threading technique using common wood by using segments. In some of the comments I heard back, I heard various excuses for not doing it that way. And in this video, I want to handicap myself to show you just how those excuses just don't hold water. If you don't want to do threading, just say, I don't want to do threading. But if you don't want to do segmenting, just say, I don't want to do segmenting. But don't blame it on your tools. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to forget all of the jigs and fixtures that I use for segmenting and just use a raw table saw for part of it and a band saw for another part of it. And I'm going to take a piece of cherry, just like this one, and turn it into this thread set. Now I'm not going to mount this into another piece of wood, that's, that's for other videos, but I, I really intend to just show how don't blame it on your tools. Just figure out a way to do it and you can do it. So let's make this threaded set. Now I don't have Frank's uh, expertise in threading. I don't have my friend Sam Angelo's uh, experience in threading. I'm going to take you from the raw beginning. This is only my second or third thread set and I'm going to handicap myself. So this is an excuse elimination video. So let's do it. I have a couple of sticks of cherry left over from another project. Let us see if they are enough for this project. Handicap number one, no table saw jigs. For half of the segments, I'm cutting them on a table saw without any special jigs. I will miss my jigs, but for now, the miter gauge is set at approximately 22 and a half degrees. Another scrap board extends the miter gauge to support the segment. Another piece of scrap clamped to the rip fence provides consistent sizing. Then to cut, I first cut off the end at an angle, then set the fence for about one inch for the segment length. This should yield about a 3 inch diameter ring. Please note that the scrap on the rip fence is in front of the blade. Once the cut is started, the cutoff will not be trapped between the blade and the fence. Otherwise, it would court disaster. I am only cutting four for one half of a segment ring. Now for the bandsaw segments. I am marking the size from one of the already cut segments. Again, no supporting jigs. Handicap number two, bandsaw with no jigs. Now to cut the segments on the bandsaw. My saw desperately needs a new blade and a tune-up. It pulls to the left. I am not cutting to my line. Rather, I am leaving it large. Next, I will sand to the line. Handicap number three, sanding without a jig. Next, to clean up the cut surfaces from both sets on a disc sander. Usually, I do not power sand segments from the table saw, but this will simulate a bad saw blade. The bandsaw segments desperately need sanding. I would never glue directly from the bandsaw. I have to make sure I do not burn the wood when sanding. If I do, I need to gently sand off the scorch. Handicap number four, no glue fixtures. Now to start gluing. I prefer Type Bond 1 Extend for segmenting, but most any woodworking glue would do. I am gluing segments into pairs using a rub technique I learned from a pattern maker. Spread the glue, then rub the segments together to squeeze out excess glue. After a couple of seconds, the glue seizes, and I put the pair aside. After gluing the pairs from each set, I am using the same rub technique to glue the pairs into quads. I'll let them set at least 20 minutes before I go on. As you can see, my two half rings are pretty bad. They are different sizes and definitely do not mate well. This is the half ring technique that I use to perf perfect most rings since perfection is very difficult to achieve. Back to the sander. I first sand the back to ensure a good reference surface. 
Then with the reference surface down, sand the joint until there is no gap when the two halves are put together. Back to the glue station. Spread the glue and gently clamp the two halves together. The rub technique probably would have worked here also. Now let the glue harden for about an hour. Back to the sander. I need to clean up the reference surface again for the glue joint. This will give a good surface to glue to a faceplate. As you can see, my complete ring is far from perfect, but it is enough for threading. Now glue the segment ring to a wood faceplate. Often I would use a cone center to center the ring. The center on this ring is way off. Instead, I am eyeballing the center and using the tailstock as a ram for glue pressure. With the glue dry, I can drill out the center to clean it up and tool down the outside to a smooth surface. The only thing I need to be careful of here is to carefully cut the segment points to avoid the wood splintering off. Once the surface is continuous, I can be as aggressive as I need to be. I'm going to split this ring into two. First, clean up the top surface with a gouge and a sanding board. Then bring up another faceplate in the tailstock held by a cone center and glue them together. Finally, part the ring into two rings. Each is perfectly mounted to its own faceplate. Handicap number five, developing threading muscle memory. I'm using 16 TPI chasing tools, a little more coarse than Frank's 20 TPI. I am starting with chasing the female threads. After a little preparation to give working room, I am enlarging the center hole to about 0.6 inch with a box scraper. Then, with a tool with a small hook on the end, I'm cutting a relief channel at the back of the thread area. I'm going to rework this tool, the hook is too small. Then round over the front corner with a spindle gouge. Handicap number six, no RPM meter on this lathe. Now for the threads. I'm using an armrest to hold the female chaser. Other turners that I know work directly with the tool rest without an armrest. A choice. I start crossing over the front chamfer and allow the tool to move across. On subsequent passes, I can feel the tool drop into the threads. I only apply pressure after the tool drops into the previous threads. I can apply more pressure for cutting and change the angle. My back recess seems skimpy, so I enlarge it. I check for parallel threads and decide to move on. For the male threads, I measure the inside of the female threads and add some. I'd rather be too big to start than too small. Then cut the ring down to that size and continue the standard fitting process to get close to the size. I'm leaving it big. That provides both insurance against cutting too small and a practice opportunity. Then cut a chamfer on the edge. Then start cutting the male threads across the chamfer. As the thread develops, deepen the thread and gradually move to a 90 degree angle to the wood. 
As it turns out, I am getting a lot of practice on the male threads since I left a lot of excess wood diameter. As for the lathe speed, get over it. Remember that RPM is a measure of rotation speed. The speed of wood under the tool depends on rotation and diameter. For example, 300 RPM with a 3 inch diameter is about 900 inches per minute. At 5 inches diameter, that is about 1500 inches per minute. At 1 inch, that is about 300 inches per minute. I slowed my lathe down to minimum then up just a little until it seemed comfortable. Do not depend entirely on RPM. As I test the threads together, I have to work on both being more parallel and matching the diameter. A little light wax lubricates the threads. I am parting my threaded pieces off from the faceplates. However, if these were going into a project, I would leave them on the faceplates until I had them fitted to the main project. This thread is not perfect, but that is no fault of my tools. Five of the handicaps are of no consequence in the end. The only handicap is, that matters for me is to develop more muscle memory to cut and fit the threads. That is a matter of practice. The sooner I can practice more, the sooner I can have more confidence in hand chasing threads, just like with any turning technique. I'll keep my machine cutting setup handy for when I don't want to use an insert. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video and add to the over 400 videos to choose from on my website. Please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.